Please help me welcome Chris Savage. Hey, how's it going? Hi, good to see you, good to see you, good to see you. I miss, I do miss, how many of you guys were here for the, the Batman of Raleigh last year? Yeah! And may I ask, is the Batman of Raleigh here? I mean, raise your hand if you're the Batman of Raleigh. Okay, uh, what a shame, because I would love to meet you this year when you're sober to find out what, what happened. Oh my God, I don't know if you all, like, those of you who weren't here last year, there was just some, like a, a perfectly, like, you know, a, a meaning, like, like harmless looking person, just sort of kind of not able to find his seat and then decided that like, he was gonna jump up here and then he was just gonna stand here. And luckily he kind of grabbed him and was like, hey, how you doing? And he interviewed him and then he said he was the Batman of Raleigh. So that's the end of that story. Thank you all for coming here today. I will sit here on this chair. You may continue clapping for me now. Thank you. Uh, yes. Wow. Oh, please. Stop. You don't have to. It's too much. But you can. It's fine. I mean, look, look at this. How have, the, how have the fine folks of Raleigh been treating you this weekend? It has been great. Uh, the, everyone yesterday seemed really exhausted for some reason. I don't know why. They kept saying, Chris, you're so hot, or something like that. Like, or I kept saying, Harry, something about being so hot. So I assume they were talking about me. Yeah, this, is, this is true. Uh, I just want to say this uh, officially, that uh, I know uh, the owner of the convention, and uh, I know for a fact that he said, just turn off the air conditioning yesterday. They don't need it. They don't deserve it. And that's, I mean, I said, you probably should do it. And he said, no, no, I'm just kidding. I do know that uh, Mike Broder and the people who run the show really do. They've always put on an amazing show. They've, it's always been one of my favorites to go to. And I know he was as upset as everybody else that it was a little hotter than it should have been yesterday. So thank you for tolerating it. Today has been great. How are you all doing today? That woo usually means good. Woo, woo usually means good, right? I don't know if... I mean, if they all like had simultaneously... If it was anime, they would have all simultaneously just said, We're fine! And then someone in the front row would go, Ponk! Or something like that. Maybe we should try that? Yeah. What do you guys yeah. How are you guys doing today? We're fine! Yeah. Bonk. And then, Ponk, yeah. If the Batman with Raleigh was here, he would gladly do that he stuff. <laughs> Uh, so, as, as we sit here in the, the last few days of July, you're August. Uh, you've done all the work for it. Your August looks super incredible. Uh, there's a, did anybody see last week there's a little trailer drop? Yeah. Speaking of superheroes. Yeah. Yeah, a little, a little movie coming out. There is a big movie coming out. Uh, how many of you are excited to see the Dragon Ball movie? How many of you have already watched it on, on illegalanime.net? <laughs> uh, and uh, any of you who, who believe that you may have had it spoiled by things you might have seen online, I've met so many people who are like, I basically turned off Twitter and I'm only watching what my mother posts now and I can't see, I can't look at anything. Um, they, you might be able to see every image, you might be able to see like lots of uh, descriptions of what would happen, but man, I promise you, you will not be able to replicate the emotional impact that this movie has on you. There are moments in it that will just make your brain explode, and uh, there are just moments in it for true Dragon Ball fans, Dragon Ball Z fans, Dragon Ball Super fans. Everyone will love this film. It's outstanding, and, I, and I'm so excited to, uh, to see what people's reactions are to the dub, because I think we did a great job of it. Really excited to introduce some new people into the Dragon Ball universe. Zach Aguilar has joined the cast. You guys know Zach Aguilar? Or as I like to call him, Zach Aguilar. Um, he's playing this little dude named Dr. Hedo. And I was really excited to bring on into the cast one of my really close friends that I've met doing these conventions, much like you guys have met people. Some of the people that you really like love and respect their work are actually great people. That's the best feeling of all time. Uh, uh, going to conventions recently is a guy named uh, Harvey Guillen. He's from uh, What We Do in the Shadows. Have you guys watched that show? One of my favorite all time comedies. And he is seriously one of the nicest human beings I've ever met. And he's, I am 
super surprised that uh, he even talks to me, to be honest. So there have been a lot of those moments. I remember when I was a, when I was first in the dubbing industry, I had only been working on Dragon Ball kind of a limited amount of time, just enough to have been doing Vegeta and Piccolo for a while. Uh, I went to a convention in the UK, and it was my first overseas convention I'd ever been to. It was in Milton Keynes. And I remember sitting, they had this kind of welcome dinner. I was sitting around all these people, and I wasn't used to being in green rooms that had famous people in them. And I was just sweating. Like, all, like people from some of my favorite movies from back in the 80s, like uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, like uh, Matthew Broderick was there, and what's his name from uh, playing Cameron in it? Alan uh, Is it Alan Rook? Yeah, or Alan, Alan Rook. Yeah, and uh, dude, all of the, like, the uh, Kenny Baker at the time was there. He's the, he's the R2-D2 uh, actor, and it was, oh my God, it was such a blast. So it's, I know that feeling of, of geeking out in front of people, and, uh, and I equally had nothing to say. I'd say the most profound geek out moment I ever had, and the most embarrassing way to end it, was when I, I had basically snuck or talked my way into a job when I was just out of high school because I needed a summer job working for ABC News when they were covering the Republican National Convention in Houston. And I just, I had a friend that was working there and I just called, cold called them and, and just got a job because I have a deep voice and I can get anything I want on the phone. And so <laughs> I ended up working there and part of my job was to be on the convention floor uh, during some of the speeches, and it was during like Dan Quayle, the vice president at the time, speech, and I was just sitting in the, at the bottom of the ABC News trailer, and hardly anybody was there because it was like, you know, it it was like the big panel that everybody wanted to go see. So they were all in the big panel room. They were Hall H or whatever, and I was sitting by myself. And then there was this old gentleman that sat down next to me, and I didn't really recognize him. But then I noticed that there was somebody at the door with like. The like Secret Service looking ear thing, and they were, like they kept staring at me. And then I look, the more I looked over, I realized, oh, that's ex-president Gerald Ford sitting right next to me. And I was like, what can I say to Gerald Ford? I mean, I, didn't, I never really was that great at history, and I didn't pay attention as much as I should have, and I really regretted it at that moment. So, but I, I did have a bowl of pretzels, and I said, um, <clears throat> Mr. Ex-president, would you care for a pretzel? <laughs> And he said yes, and he took a pretzel from me. That's my story. You're welcome. All right. I have one more thing to add to that, and I'm so sorry. I'm taking up all your time. There was somebody I met in an elevator yesterday uh, going up to the, to the room. Maybe he's probably in here. Uh, he said, how are you doing tonight, Mr. Sabbat? And I said, I'm great. Thank you very much. And that reminded me of something. I always find it funny when people see me in public, they go, you're Chris Sabbath. <laughs> and, I, and my response is like, I, I'm aware of that. Yes, I'm, I, I thank you for reminding me. I almost forgot. Uh, but that's usually people say, you're Chris Sabbath. And I'm fine with like, are you Chris Sabbath? But usually when they, when they just point at you and they tell you who you are, that's such like, a, I don't ever know how to respond to that. But I was very proud of the person who just said, How's your evening been? They like, had a human conversation with me and it felt really good. So if you ever do meet somebody that you admire or you see them in an elevator or something, I mean, unless there's some doubt that you think it's actually them, I would just say, how's your afternoon today, Mr. So-and-so? Or like, uh, hey, I really liked you and so-and-so, whatever. And that, it's a good thing to hear. Just a bit of, uh, you know, fan, uh, fan etiquette or something. I have some, no idea. Some all might advice. Yes, this is some sage all might advice. Sorry, I'm boring the hell out of all of you. I apologize. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. Hello, what's your name? Hi, my name is Will. Um, You're Will! <laughs> <laughs> when you were working on creating the personality and voice for All Might, did you draw inspiration from Armstrong at all? Uh, I definitely saw bits of Armstrong in All Might. I think I'm, like, all Might and Armstrong are very similar. And a lot of kind of, they're both pretty emotional. They're both very caring. They both have a young one that they're looking after. It's just, I call uh, All Might basically Armstrong in a suit with less jowl. Like, Armstrong is a stronger mouth to make smooth. 
he's got this like ribbit ribbit to his voice where All Might is always very clean. But then, so All Might, Grown Strong. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, what's your name? Hi, my name's Taj. Hello, uh, Saj. Hello, Taj. Like Taj. Taj Mahal. Yeah. Um, uh, you forgot point. your question. I did, sorry. Uh, I was, are you having a nice day, Mr. Taj? I am, are you? Good. Thank I you. am too. Thank you. Um, I was wondering, when it comes to All Might and Yami from Black Clover, who do you think is the better leader between the two? Who's the better leader? Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, that's, that's a tough one. Yami, I, like early on in the series, for those of you who aren't intimately aware of Black Clover, early on in the series, I didn't think he was a very good leader at all. I thought he was kind of a joke. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't think he was gonna last more than one or two seasons. I thought, oh, this guy's going away. There's no way, he's gonna be the trainer for the first season. But as he's gone on, he's become more and more inspiring. As he's gone on, and, and you, find, you find yourself really, really liking him yeah. a lot. And I, he's become one of my favorite characters over the series, but it's really hard to compare those two. Like the, yeah. there's, the stakes are, the stakes are so high in My Hero Academia versus Black Clover. Oh, I guess there's a couple of Black Clover fans out there about to go, um, actually, uh, the, <laughs> but the, I don't know. Uh, crap, I, okay, uh, the easiest answer is, Yami is a better leader right now because All Might's not doing anything right. at all. So, he's just sick. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello, gentlemen. Hello, Mr. Chris Abad. How are you doing today? I am great. Thank you. Awesome. I actually just want to say something. Um, I can't really go into too much details about this, but when I was over in Iraq, one of our call signs uh, was Frieza incoming, death ray coming. That was a sign saying tactical retreat. So, I just want to say on behalf of my military brothers, my army guys, and myself, and everybody else in my unit, you saved our lives that day. Dragon Ball's literally saved oh, our unit's lives. So, thanks man, appreciate you. Yeah. Keep on strong, dude. Thank you, and thank you seriously. Uh, thank you seriously for all the things you do, and all the servicemen who do all the amazing stuff that you all do. I think about you all quite a bit every time I meet you and I think, yes, yeah, you can, I, I can talk myself into believing that like, yes, I'm entertaining people and that's a service too, but it's not that dangerous to be a voice actor. And so thank you seriously for what you guys do. Seriously. Um, I have had, I have had so many emotionally profound stories told to me this weekend. And anytime that happens, I will always like take a moment and stop and just hold someone's hand because clearly there are a lot of people who um, have had experiences during the, the course of these long shows. And some people have used really long shows like Dragon Ball and One Piece and, and uh, Full Metal and stuff to, you know, to either escape from a bad situation at home, or like escape from things they aren't happy about at school, or uh, to cope with the pain of having to go through a really long surgery and things like that, or you know, the, the reminder of, of friends that they used to watch these shows with that are no longer with us and stuff. And uh, it always reminds me that while I'm extremely honored to be a part of these shows, I'm very humbled that I am allowed to be attached to the things that are so important to many of you. And it, and it gives me a lot of reverence for the shows that I am connected with. I am so happy that you love to come and sit in a panel and hear me ramble on. Uh, but I really appreciate all of you for coming and kind of sharing this moment because all of us have a connection with these shows. And it's very, very important uh, that we all understand that like, I'm just as, I'm just as much along for the ride as you guys are. Like we're all sort of taking these giant anime cruise ships with one another. I'm just really lucky I have a, like a, a room that has a balcony or something like that. I don't know, it's pretty cool. But thank you all for being a part of this. Hello. Hi. 
Um, wow, okay, that's gonna be hard to follow up. Uh, <laughs> um, okay. And what's your favorite fart sound? <laughs> So I will say that, like, uh, so Full Metal Alchemist was kind of my first uh, uh, exposure to you as a voice actor. So, it, I my question is that in their peak of strength, who's going to win in an arm wrestling match, Armstrong or All Might? Oh man, <laughs> why are you guys asking me these hard ones? Uh, I think that it would never end. Uh, it would go on, well, at least it would go on for an hour until All Might goes boom, and then his arm breaks off or something like that. Like, ouch, sorry. Um, then it's blood, blood spurts out of his nose. But I think they, they would arm wrestle for about 30 minutes until it would turn into the arm wrestle where like, then they start patting each other on the back and then they would just hug it out. Because I think they would be very kindred spirits. I don't think that they would actually try to win at that point. They're like, it would be like that epic bro fist that they had in the series. Yeah. Uh, with the, I forgot what the name of the character was that Armstrong. Uh, is uh, the mentor's husband? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The where, they, like, yeah. where they did that crazy handshake where they go beyond each other's hands to actually shake each other's arm muscles or whatever. So. <laughs> That's awesome. That's Thank what you it would so be. much. Take care. Hey, my name is Hunter. Uh, my question is, out of all the big character moments you've had, you know, All Might's uh, first all for one, Vegeta's final atonement, has there ever been, a, uh, I guess, a moment that got you, like, I guess, touched in the booth, like you kind of had to take a minute? What's, like, the most emotional you've kind of ever gotten recorded in the line, would you say? It's, wow, there's a, there's a lot. But I will say there has never been a show that has created more feels than My Hero Academia. That show, to me, is had the has like the single greatest number and i think it's for a number of reasons it's a you know it's a brand new fresh show it's being written by someone who's really current and really modern and his storytelling is very appropriate for the time we're living in uh, and also as i'm getting older and i have kids myself i really am putting a lot of thought into what skills i'm passing on to them and so when all might speaks I think my voice as a father comes out a lot. And and if, when anything ever happens to any kid in that show, it's, it's very profoundly upsetting to me. Because uh, when you have a child, um, this isn't in any medical textbook, but I know that you grow an extra organ in your body. It's invisible and it hurts anytime your children hurt. And so the, any pain you hear in All Might's voice, that is real from me. And I have had many session breaking Errors because I'm crying in the booth recording all night, and I, it's it's a tough, that's a tough show because the music is so beautiful, everything is so beautiful. So I guess my hero academia, that's my final answer. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Jose, and uh, my question is: uh, now that you sit on the Mount Olympus of like dubbing, um, what is your uh, project selection process like how do you choose what what to turn away and what to what projects to work on well I can tell you as a voice actor um, and every voice actor will tell you this um, my selection process is oh you want to use me on a show of course I'll be on your show <laughs> like you never any actor who ever gets to the point where you're not excited to be on anything anyone asks you to be on unless it's like gross um, you should never lose that spirit so I don't I don't actually say I don't want to work on them. sorry wait wait. wait 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 okay so the only time I've ever had to turn something down is when the show records in like in the evening when I would want to put my kids to bed that's the only like and if they can't work around some of that, sometimes scheduling is the only thing that becomes a problem. But I'm, I'm excited to be in any show anyone wants me to be in. So I don't really ever pick and choose. I don't ever go, no, I will not be in that show. But yes, I will be in that show. I find myself more often than not having to convince directors like, hey, I, as you said, I, while well, I, I may sit on Mount Olympus of voice acting, <laughs> I actually love to do this, so please cast me in anything. I don't care. It's fun. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Hello. If you could, uh, if you could pick one other person, have uh, one for all. Who would it be? Oh man, you, I guess. <laughs> I choose you. E 
take my hand. <laughs> okay, I guess you probably want to answer someone else in the show. Uh, I would just give it to Minetta and make everyone in this room groan. Can you imagine Super Minetta? <laughs> hey, can you imagine Minetta with the ability to see through walls? Dangerous. That's my final answer. <laughs> hey, what's up, Black Bulls? Favorite Yami Sukihiro moment in the whole entire show? Favorite Yami Sukihiro moment. I like it anytime Yami is having his prime time. Do you know what pri his prime time is? That's where he's going to the bathroom. That's my favorite thing about his character, actually, other than the fact that he's just phenomenal and uh, has become like a really emotionally cool character uh, to play because he's you've discovered that he's way more caring than he like presents. Uh, I love any, like, he's very, very healthy with the bathroom habits, and I find that funny. I like any time he uses, uh, I, any time he uses uh, Fenderol to get it, to get around, any time he has to use his wheels, and some of my favorite moments are all of these, like, clueless moments he's been having with Charlotte, uh, where there's a character in the show who's really tough, he calls her Prickly Princess, and she is clearly infatuated with him, and he clearly has no idea. And while some people may play that kind of character as in, uh, like some people might have played that character as in Yami probably knows, I, like, I think it's way funnier for him to be so bad at dating or girls that he's just as bad as she is. Like I think it's, I love how clueless he is with Charlotte. Thank you. Thanks, you. Hello. Out of all the characters that you voice, which one's your favorite? Of all the characters, I voice which one's my favorite? Yeah. Uh, Yamcha. He's great. <laughs> I know, guys. I, I can't pick a favorite. I get to do all the best voices in all the best shows. Um, it's. I like them all for different reasons. Vegeta is amazing because he he's the prince of all Saiyans, except he hurts my voice. So sometimes that sucks. Um, I like Piccolo right now because he has his own movie, basically. <laughs> I like Yamcha because he's just so dumb. Um, but as I said, I love Yami and I love All Might, and I, it's, I can't pick, I just can't pick one. Uh, who's, who's your favorite? Vegeta. Vegeta, yes! As long as you say you, that Kakarot sucks, he'll be happy. <laughs> He does suck. Yeah. Thank you, so you heard it here first. Hello. Hello. Um, so you play like a lot of intense people, like All Might and uh, Vegeta. Is there like a way before like film, filming a fight, like you get in a state of mind? That, that I uh, is there a way I prepare? Is that what you're asking? Uh, as I'm getting like. Over time, like when I first started, no, I was dumb and irresponsible and I did so many things that I should not have done on the days or nights before sessions. Uh, I was really dumb about it. There's no reason I should even have my voice right now, uh, but I was very, very lucky. Uh, these days, I just make sure I hydrate a lot and that I try to get a good night's sleep the night before, although with kids, that's never possible. Um, and. I don't know. I've just been very, very lucky. I think playing a character like Vegeta early on was like working out a muscle in my throat that and luckily over 20 years has just like, I've managed to kind of keep conditioned over, over time. So I never really, it's, it de I'm definitely more like All Might now. I go about an hour and all of a sudden I'm like, oh man, I'm, I feel like I want to bleed out of the throat. Uh, but I, I still manage to keep it. So the I try to talk as much as I can in the morning, whether it's to my kids or whether it's to actually call my mother sometimes, although she doesn't let me talk that much. Uh, the, uh, let's see, the, and if I'm really feeling like groggy or my throat's kind of mushy, I, I studied opera when I was in school. I, was a, I went to University of North Texas and studied opera. And sometimes I do this technique, it's called bubbling and it's super embarrassing to do, and I normally don't like it when people see me do it, but it's, uh, you basically have to sing through a closed mouth uh, and push enough air through it so that it like, 
it moves, it rattles your lips around, so it kind of opens up your soft palate, so it's like that kind of stuff. And if you can do that, then all of a sudden, like, starts working out your soft palate and stuff like that. There's a lot of methods. Pick the one that's right for you and talk to your doctor. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Hello. All right. Um, me and my brother recently been watching Attack on Titan, and we noticed that you voiced uh, one of the captains in the first season. Yes, so, Kit's Warman. Yeah. So, it's interesting to us is you played a minor role in Attack on Titan. So my question is, if you were to choose any character to voice in Attack on Titan, what would it be? Probably anyone with more than ten lines. I would think <laughs> that would have been that would have been fun. <laughs> but again, I don't complain. I'm very happy. Uh, I think you'd be an awesome Zeke. That's all I'm saying. I, I would. Uh, I would fight Jason uh, Liebrecht for that. Although he would probably win. He's pretty intense. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Hi. Uh, I was uh, meaning to ask you about this when I got you to sign this. Yeah. What was kind of how you got started doing this? Like, how are you contacted about can it? Can I can I grab it from you real quick? Sure. During the pandemic, we were contacted by um, we were contacted by this person called Mason Lieberman, and Mason Lieberman is a composer. He's like does a lot of uh, like video game scores, and he's in charge of a lot of. He's an audio director for video games, and this is an album that came out over the pandemic. So he had contacted all of the voice actors from My Hero Academia, asking if people wanted to participate in this. Where they had the these guys, Mason and uh, these guys, do a bunch of these different things for different uh, different shows, and this was kind of a fun thing to do because they gave us the. They gave us lyrics, they gave us a guide track, and then we recorded ourselves singing different parts of the song that was inspired by uh, My Hero Academia, You Say Run. And it was a very touching thing to do during the pandemic because it was uh, all of the proceeds went to charities and things. And it was a really fun experience and I would totally do it again for many reasons. One, I don't get a chance to sing very often, especially like emotional type stuff like that song was. Uh, but it's also nice when you're working with somebody who is so incredibly good at processing vocals and making you sound way cooler than you actually are, I think, so. Thank you. Cheers. Now for that, did you, uh, since it was during the pandemic, did you have to record at home? Yeah, we all recorded from home. Oh, wow. That's... Yeah, it was pretty cool. Hello. Hi. This mic is much further down than I thought it was. You can, you uh, can, you can turn, it, turn it up. There you go. Yep. Just oh, boom. Very cool. Awesome. Uh, so, which version of All Might is your favorite to voice? Do you like voicing like the big superhero All Might or like the little scrawny, skinny All Might? I would not enjoy doing one over the other without the other. You know what I mean? Like it's the fun thing about it is I get to do both. Um, however, I've met many people over the years, and I kind of agree with them that say that uh, Weekend All Might is actually a more relatable character because he's the real guy. Like, all the big buffed out All Might, that's the costume he puts on, the, the, that he puts on for people. So when he's, being, when he's being real and he's being vulnerable and he's having his feelings, uh, a lot of people really like that about him. And I think that's what I enjoy about Weekend All Might as well. But you can't argue that like getting to do amazing stuff like United States of Smash isn't the best thing on the planet. Right. It's just, they're really great for different reasons. Sorry, I, I have a hard time committing to some of these. It's just, I'm very grateful to be a part of all this and I hate to poo on something else, you know? No, thank you. Thanks. You have 15 minutes for your question. Oh, okay. I'm joking, he just said 15 minutes. I, um, I just would really would like to know how has Alma inspired you after you know you stepped into his role and played his character? How has that impacted you afterwards? Have, has that affected me acting wise? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I think I'm, I touched on this a little earlier that all playing All Might and and seeing what he's dealing with and and experiencing the emotions he has. Uh, in the show and the kind of the, the role model that he is has really inspired me to do more things for other people too, like to to decide who it is I'm trying to kind of 
are, you know, foster a, a like a working relationship with or trying to kind of help them with their careers. I've always believed in trying to help people, but All Might has definitely kind of turned my ear quite a bit to thinking about how often I'm really doing that. You know what I mean? We get really tied up in our business and our lives and it's very easy to ignore it's very easy to ignore people who are asking you for assistance and advice and um, I've been trying to kind of give it out as much as I can these days. So, thanks, good question. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi, I'm Taylor. Hi. <laughs> um, so my question was like, have you ever like, w when doing a line, have you ever like cracked your voice into like another character on accident? Have I cracked, is my voice cracked or something like that? Oh yeah, there have been some of these. There's been moments where I've, uh, oh man, I'm trying to think of a good one. Uh, oh, it's, I, I haven't. There have been times when I've accidentally done the wrong voice. I've gone in and I've completely forgot. Like I wasn't paying attention, and then the beeps happen, and then you kind of throw it out, and you go, wait, sorry, I'm in an all night session, uh, not a Vegeta session, or I'm um, trying to think. I don't know. I, I can't think of an exact example, but there are a lot of fun moments where you just make a dumb sound. But but I don't want to discourage you because, or I don't want you to think that that's actually a bad thing. Uh, one thing when I'm ever talking with new actors or people who are getting into this business, all of this is dumb. Like you, if you're not feeling dumb while you're doing it to some degree, you're not doing it right. Like if you're not afraid to make a goofy sound because you think you're gonna sound dumb doing it, or like you don't, if you, you're not afraid to like go all out or to do, make some sort of thing that just sounds like I'm gonna try it, this is gonna sound weird, but I'm gonna try it. If you don't try those things, you're not, you're not doing it right, I think. You just need to release all of your fears and and do and like experience whatever comes out. You know what I mean? The director. It's better for the director to say, "Okay, all right, let's dial that back some," than it is for them to go, "Well, that was boring." You know. So I would encourage you, any of you guys who are wanting to be voice actors, don't be afraid to lay it all out there. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Hi. So when I was putting this picture together for my husband. Oh, you drew, uh, you're the one that uh, did the, uh, the collage for yes, your husband, correct? Yes, yes. Um, I realized you did a lot for Dragon Ball Z. How did you manage the workload? How did I manage to what? Do the workload of oh, all these uh, characters. How I managed to do the workload was that, that Funimation hired me on as a full-time employee when I was very young. Like I was in, like in my early 20s and they hired me for nothing. And I was in my early 20s, just like many of you are, and I didn't have a family or friends or anymore because once I started working with Dragon Ball, the Dragon Ball people became my friends. Uh, I just poured every bit of my soul into working on Dragon Ball. It became something, I really loved doing it though. Like I love, I'm a workaholic, I love production. It was awesome. And luckily I had like Justin Cook, for instance. You guys know Justin Cook? Uh, Kirishima and My Hero Academia, he's Yusuke and Yu Hakusho. He and I worked together a lot. He was my engineer for a while and then he was a director. And he and I spent a lot of time together, like at work and after work, hanging out. Like Justin made working at Funimation so much better uh, than it would have been otherwise. So, love you Justin Cook. He's not here. Hello, James Smith. Um, I had a question. So, when you were younger, first getting into it, would you ever mess around with people? Like, you know, go to order a pizza or do anything and just mess with the voice and try Are to- Are you kidding? That's how I started in voice acting. Uh, <laughs> what many of you don't know, there's probably only a handful of you out here that are old enough to actually remember this, but they had landlines. And they, not only that, they didn't have caller ID either. So you could call anyone you wanted to without them ever knowing it was you. And it was amazing. And I would sit there with the phone book open and just randomly call people and just go like, hey, is your refrigerator running? And they go, what? And I go, you better go catch it. <laughs> and I'd hang up. Um, I was obsessed with changing people's um, 
outgoing messages on their their you know uh, message machine at home, which at the time was just like a cassette yeah. or something that and you could do it to them, and they would never know that you did it either. So like they would, you could change it, and it would be on there forever. Um, and my favorite thing to do is like I had a friend whose dad had something crazy at his house. He had a home office that had two lines, not just one, but two. And you could, I could call somebody and quickly put them on hold while I was calling someone else. And then I would conference them together and sit there and listen to the conversation happen. And in high school, this was amazing. Like, if I knew of one person who hated another person, I would just call them and I'd just sit there and listen to the chaos ensue. Like, why'd you call me? I didn't call you, you called me. Like, no I didn't, you called me. Like, oh, it was the best time in my life. I'm sorry to all of you from my high school. I, Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Hello. Hi. Um, my question is, if you could choose any show, continuing or a new show, uh, what show would it be to delve in? Uh, show continuing. Um, all of them are continuing. I would love to see more Dragon Ball Super. I don't know if you guys would be into that. Um, let's see. What's another show that I, I... I would love to see another season of Pop Team Epic, if you guys ever watched that show. Like, four of you went, woo! Um, What's another show? Uh, God, there's so, there's, like, I would love to see every, Yu Yu Hakusho, show, great example. I would love to see that extended, like, that show extended. That would be amazing. I would love to see you dub in uh, Demon Slayer. Like, What'd you say? I would love to see you dub in Demon Slayer. Like, oh, uh, yes, talk to Zach about that. Every single one of you, go say, Zach, tell him to put Chris on Demon Slayer. Unfortunately, that show is dubbed in California, and it's not as easy to uh, record because I'm in Dallas, so I haven't really bugged him about it. Thank you. Thanks. Well, he owes you now. Yeah, Zach owes me. Exactly. Uh, hello, Chris. Uh, my name is Fonz, and I hope you're having a great day today. It's been awesome. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, growing up, I watched uh, a lot of Dragon Ball, and I've always been kind of curious. How is it um, you deal with the screaming and all the yelling in Dragon Ball, like with all the voices like Vegeta, Piccolo, and Yamcha, like how do you deal with that? Oh, you deal with it by sitting around in a lot of pain afterwards. <laughs> There's nothing you can do about it. Like, it just hurts. And as the director of the show, and luckily I played a lot of the main characters, so when people would come in, uh, when I was directing the show, I'd say, hey, this is what this show is. We may not be making like the most like the the highest art in the world, but what we are doing is throwing our voices as on the show as intense of a way as humanly possible. Because if this show is anything, it is screaming, and we're going to scream. And so you can do one of two things: you can either record a kind of a half lame scream, and then make me have to like have you do it again, or you can do a really awesome one right now. And so. That was usually the deal I had with everybody, and it hurts and it sucked, uh, but it was but it was worth it because you only get one chance to do it. Well, or in the case of Dragon Ball, you also get Dragon Ball Z Kai and all, all the video games and stuff. But generally, you only get one chance to do it, and so you got to throw it all out there. Thank you. Sure. So we only got a couple minutes left, so we're gonna try to get through uh, as many as possible here. All right. Okay. Good afternoon, gentlemen. So, what is the most ridiculous thing you've ever been paid to say, or something that just made you crack up and die in the booth, or something like that? Oh my gosh. Uh, anything I got paid to say in a show called Panty and Stocking featuring Gardevoir? That was a crazy show. Um, anything I got paid to say in, uh, like, I can't even quote those lines in this panel, because there are children here. It is highly inappropriate. Um, let's see. And I worked on a show called a Ninja Slayer that I wish was like that I could do more work on because it was insane. Uh, and I don't know, like just the fact that All Might got to say "clench your butt cheeks" was that was payment in and of itself. You know what I mean? Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name's Evan. I'm an aspiring voice actor. I want to eventually do it full time. And I was wondering when it. What would you recommend as someone to get their first step into it? How do I get started and how can I make it my future career? 
I wish I had a shorter answer to this that I could give you, but the, there are a lot of resources online. I'm working on trying to kind of come up with a resource that I could literally hand you uh, that would help, and I would love to do that. My advice to you right now is to find, like the most important thing is just get online, find a community of people to work with. Uh, I know that Justin Briner did it, uh, Kellen Gaw, uh, uh, Clifford Chapin, all the main characters from My Hero Academia, the younger guys, they were all part of a group together that existed online where they shared auditions or they would, they would uh, rate each other's performances or just work on creating your own material at home. Don't be afraid. Learn how to record yourself well at home. Doesn't have to be that most amazing microphone. It's really just what you can do with it, just the practice of doing it. Get yourself so comfortable hearing your own voice in headphones uh, and hearing yourself back that it doesn't sound weird to you anymore. You know what I mean? Because when you go in and you do get that first chance, you do get that first audition, the worst thing you can do is kind of be unprepared and self-conscious. You just want to go in feeling like, all right, I, I did this, I'm, already, I'm ready to do this. And even if you haven't done it all, just go in and, and throw yourself into it because the clients, a lot of the time, they're just waiting for someone to come in and have an idea of what they want. And sometimes they don't even know what they want, but if you can walk in confidently and say, this is what I'm doing, uh, people will have confidence in your acting work too. Thank you so much. Good luck, man. My name's Austin, I'm just a big fan of your work. And one thing I'm surprised hasn't been brought up yet is you voicing a certain moss-headed samurai. <laughs> and I just have to ask, of all your time as Rora Noah on One Piece, were there any particular moments that stand out to you, like any of uh, 100%, and I think I would agree, I think all One Piece fans would agree that nothing happened, right? Is the best scene, the scene where he's taken all of Luffy's pain and he's bleeding from the face and arms and Luffy walks in, he's like, how's it going? I'm fine, everything's cool. Nothing happened. Um, yeah, that, that was my all-time favorite moment. However, for the longest time, you know, the dub was a little behind. Yeah. Everybody would come to me and go, man, are you excited to dub the Wano arc? Are you excited to dub the Wano arc? I finally got to see some footage of the Wano arc, and it is amazing. I, like, anyone who is not catching up yet should probably catch up soon, because once it gets to the Wano arc, it, like, you're not gonna wanna miss anything that's happening there. It's incredible. The animation changes, the music changes, the character design even looks, like, everything looks like a movie um, in that arc, and it's beautiful, so. Funny, like, I remember Oda saying specifically that everything has been building up to this. It's true, it's true. Thank you for your Thank question. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, that is our time, but before we go, for those of you who are in line, we're gonna go ahead and do this. I want you guys to shout your questions all at the same time. Okay. All right, on the count of three, just yell your questions, ready? One, two, three. Okay, um, I would say uh, 93, uh, it was during the Trunk Saga, the uh, All Might, obviously. Uh, I, I don't know, I, d I wish I could have played more of the character. Um, like, I, whatever ship works for you. Um, <laughs> let's see, uh, and then Bulma, obviously. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, Riley, please give it up. Hello, beautiful people of the internet. My name is Soul, and I'm the guy holding the camera during this panel. If you enjoy Christopher Sabat's work, if you're a big Dragon Ball fan, this is the channel for you. I have a lot of other Dragon Ball videos. If you're just a fan of anime in general, this is a good place to be. And if you just want more panels, I have plenty of those on this channel as well. Be sure to check that out. Thank you for watching. And again, subscribe, liking the video. These are things that make my brain happy, keeps me going.